Hello, welcome to today's focus on the uh, aerobic physiology. So if you have a look, I've just put up here uh, the big picture looking through the unit of work and where we're going to be going in the next couple of weeks. So as you can see here, I've kind of put onto this side, we've, the first part of our year looked at anaerobic physiology. So we had a look at uh, different muscle fibers, energy systems, components of fitness and ergogenic aids linked to anaerobic athletes, sprinters, shot putters, discus, 400 meter runners. And we had a look at those specifically with regard to the ATPPC system, the glycolytic system. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our aerobic scheme of works. And now what we're having a look at is this pathway. So we're going to have a look first up. Now I'm going to assume knowledge knowledge on our slow oxidative type 1 fibers okay so I'll do a little recap on that at the start of the lesson then we're going to have a look at how particular sports and examples I suppose things like marathon runners uh, we're going to be having a look at uh, long distance cyclists and we can have a look at how they create or we synthesize ATP to produce energy. So what we're going to look then um, is have a look at a specific energy system called the aerobic energy system. After that, we're going to have a look at the component of fitness, aerobic capacity. And we're going to have a look at specifically how you train um, that component of fitness and then the adaptations that will come as a result of it. Finally, we'll have a look at our three categories of ergogenic aids and see how athletes use these ergogenic aids to enhance aerobic performance. Okay, so that's the overview. Uh, that's where we're going to be going over the next couple of weeks. Uh, if we have a look quickly at the specification then, so as you see here, as I mentioned previously, this is what you've done um, so far with regard to energy systems. So that leaves us just one energy system to complete, as I said earlier, aerobic energy system. Now, by the end of your lesson on this, you should be able to um, obviously work through these key areas. So, you know, fuels that are broken down, um, site of the reactions, control and enzymes, ATP yield, stage names, and byproducts. That's what you need to do for all of them. Um, so let's have a look at the aerobic system then. So with regard to the aerobic energy system, we've done a fair bit of recapping on the glycolytic system. And the reason why we did that is for the first stage of aerobic energy production, we actually use a very similar process, or well, the same process as we did for the glycolytic system. But of course, the difference is now because it's aerobic, oxygen is now present. So we're looking at athletes such as marathon runners, such as long distance cyclists, they have oxygen present. So it changes how the glycolytic energy system worked without oxygen. Let's have a look what that means then. So first stage, uh, well, you have to know these, stage one name, aerobic glycolysis, and the site of reaction is the same as we've used for all uh, well, the previous two energy systems uh, for this. So we've got stage one, there's three stages overall, but this first stage is called aerobic glycolysis, and this basically refers to the breakdown of glycogen and glucose with oxygen present. So to start us off then, make sure you've got this on. I would certainly suggest that the stage name and the site of reaction are used as a kind of a core now note questions uh, for this, because they're really important when you get examined. So going on from, let's have a look then. As you can see, this will be familiar. Glycogen is broken down by the enzyme GPP into glucose, exactly the same as the glycolytic system. Next stage, again, exactly the same as the glycolytic energy system. So we have uh, glucose being broken down by PFK into pyruvic acid. And as a result of this, we have two ATP uh, resynthesized. Okay, so that is what we is the same. Now, of course, the big 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 difference between the glycolytic and aerobic energy system and the aerobic glycolysis part of the aerobic energy system is that pyruvic acid now does not convert into lactic acid because oxygen isn't present so you remember it stimulated aldh to break it down into lactic acid which caused us problems with obla etc now because this is the aerobic energy system because we are talking about a lower intensity type of exercise it means that oxygen is present now because oxygen is present this means that pyruvic acid now carries on okay it doesn't break down into lactic acid it basically combines so pyruvic acid combines with something called coenzyme A, okay, to form acetyl coenzyme A, which is shortened to acetyl CoA. Okay, so what we have then, pyruvic acid, because oxygen is present now, it binds with an enzyme called coenzyme A, and this forms acetyl CoA. Okay, so this process then gives us acetyl CoA. Now what we have to do, and I suppose so far this is the only additional thing we, we need to learn. So we need to make sure that we know that that combines with that to give that. Now from this point what happens at this process is that acetyl CoA is now going to combine with an acid and the acid leads to another acid and 
this is really important. So we get that in our head. So acetyl-CoA then is going to combine with oxalacetic acid. Okay, so oxalacetic acid. Now this will lead to something called citric acid, which is absolutely vital because this is the acid that takes us into our next stage, okay, which is called the Krebs cycle. So citric acid is now in a position that it's going to go into the Krebs cycle. So if I put that over to here, so it's going to enter the Krebs cycle. Stage two is called the Krebs cycle. The site of reaction is something called the mitochondria matrix, which I'll show you a picture of in the lesson. And it is basically the powerhouse part of the of the cell that we can create lots of energy. So within our muscle cells, we have a powerhouse, like a real, really powerful area where if we can create energy there we get more energy so if we just get that into our head that's that that's the site of reaction so citric acid is there and this is a key thing to add to your note because when citric acid enters the Krebs cycle it's a really good way to describe this it's oxidized oxygen is present and it's oxidized into the Krebs cycle now when it goes into the Krebs cycle almost like a melting pot there's a the chain of reactions take place and what we need to know is that as a result of citric acid being oxidized into the Krebs cycle three things take place first thing CO2, we can remove CO2. Okay, we get rid of CO2. It's a waste product. We can remove it. It's not harmful. We can breathe it out. Okay, as we know from uh, our work on mechanics of breathing and um, gaseous exchange. Next thing, we have the release or the synthesis of 2 ATP. Okay, so that gives us energy production. That's what we're after. Remember, this is an energy system. And finally, what happens is we release hydrogen. Okay, so hydrogen is released from the Krebs cycle. And this is absolutely vital because hydrogen is going to be the thing that moves, carries on down the aerobic system. Okay, so what I need from you now then is to understand how it does that. So hydrogen, okay, basically then binds to two electron carriers called NAD and FAD. So what happens then? H or hydrogen binds with NAD and FAD to form NADH and FADH. Okay, so that is where we're at at the moment. So we've got two ATP that gives us some energy. CO2 we breathe out. Hydrogen carries on and it binds with NAD and FAD to form NADH and FADH. So make sure you've got that in your head because, I mean, if we get this right, within a hydrogen, this is some extra knowledge here, within hydrogen we have an electron and an ion. Okay, so what we need then is particularly we need this electron to be carried by the two electron carriers NAD and FAD. So once we've got this, the H really, the thing that we're really really interested in is the electron within the hydrogen atom okay and this will bind to NAD and FAD to form NADH and FADH. Now as soon as that happens that we've got NADH and FADH this means that we can then have NADH and FADH can enter the electron transfer chain. Now the electron transfer chain is the final part of the aerobic energy system and it's where the big big energy uh, production takes place. So NADH, FADH enter the electron transfer chain and I'll just make sure you've got your sites ready here. So the, the stage name is as I've said there the electron transfer chain and the site of reaction is the, mito is the folds of the mitochondria and it's the mitochondria cristae. Okay, so you need to know the difference in the matrix and the cristae. Okay, so this then is, a, you know, this is the bit where we get the big, big energy production. So at this point, we've came down, we've got hydrogen out of here, we've oxidized this, and this is then going to add H, FAD H into the electron transfer chain. And at this point, this is the bit where you can add some extra knowledge at this point. So what we have then, um, then the hydrogen that's been carried by NAD and FAD, okay, basically split. Okay, so there's a splitting of the, within the hydrogen to an electron and an ion. Okay, so when this happens, the ion, okay, as so we start from here, well, actually, if we come back to here, let's just go this bit. So if, if you could just copy down from here. So the ion, okay, is oxidized. So when the hydrogen splits, all you have to say here is NADH, FADH, enter electron transfer chain, okay, and then the, hyd the hydrogen splits into an ion and an electron. The ion is oxidized. Um, so oxygen will come in with the hydrogen ion and then it will be released via H2O or water. Okay, so we get rid of that via sweat, um, for example. Now, on top of that, when the hydrogen splits, okay, there is also, as we know, because we've got an electron within our hydrogen atom, so the electron at this point 
splits and because of it splitting like that this allows this electron transfer in here allows 34 ATP to be resynthesized which is a huge amount really so as you can see compared to everything else so we get 34 ATP from that I mean I'm not going to go exactly through how that happens but the, you know there's a specific there's a detailed science that you might do in biology of why this happens but ultimately what you have to know is that the electron transfer chain leads to 34 ATP being resynthesized so at this point, NADH, FADH comes into here, okay, into the electron transfer chain. Now, the hydrogen that's being carried splits into an ion and electron, okay, um, and from there then the ion uh, combines with oxygen, is oxidized, and then forms H2O, and the electron transfers, splits. As that splits, it causes the resynthesis of 34 ATP. So hopefully, you can see how that works. Now, by the end of this um, in, you know, lesson, what we need to make sure, I suppose, is that you can go from stage one, aerobic glycolysis, stage two, Krebs cycle, stage three, the electron transfer chain. I, I would suggest that you make sure you should have eight to ten questions, really. And I suggest that probably, you know, you would have a question or two for the first part, aerobic glycolysis. But the real stuff that you should be questioning yourself on is from acetyl CoA down. Okay, so pyruvic acid, I'd suggest, for example, a question you might have. Um, what does pyruvic acid combine with and what does it what does it lead to? Okay, so that would be something that you could use. But you You've got to make sure you have questions that are really interrogating your notes from here, from pyruvic acid down. Okay, so hopefully I've tried to go back over this a couple of times just to make sure that you get that difference in. And I suppose I should say at this point, if you get to that point where you get to NADH, FADH into the electron transfer chain, if you just said there's a splitting here, uh, so that the hydrogen splits, if you could just say that a hydrogen splits leading to the uh, resynthesis of 34 ATP and the byproduct of H2O, that's enough. But I feel like I have to give a little bit more detail um, here for those people who want to know specifically why and how it happens. Now, the thing we'll have a look at in a lesson is that, uh, you know, although this is pretty much talking about the, the breakdown of glycogen and glucose, fats are also a huge energy source for the aerobic energy system. And we'll have a look at how that is slightly different, but it's taking, it doesn't get mentioned. Uh, in the actual kind of diagram um, for the aerobic energy system. But fats are acting simultaneously and they are working and creating energy at the same time. So we need to have a little understanding of that and we'll also have a look at how we summarize and evaluate this energy system in the lesson. Okay, thanks very much.